Now, let's analyze further. Government action versus supply relation. It is a very simple bar. I want you to just take a look, all from URA, when the, we take a look at the history first. In 2015, 2016, when the supply start to increase, we realize one thing, government will start to ease property cooling measures. That is where they relax the rule because supply go up. When supply go up, there will be a pressure on the price, right? So in order to balance that, from what we see from the data, government relax the policy. Let's take a look at another interesting one. When supply decrease, supply decrease, you see the supply decrease? When supply decrease, there will be a tendency that price will go up, right? But government don't want the price to go up too fast and furious. Government implement new cooling measures. See that? To counter it, to balance it. So when the supply start to come down, uh, that means uh, there'll be new ABSD, you know. New ABSD if the history repeats itself. ABSD 1 is where second timer, 3 plus 3. ABSD 2 is where second timer, 3 plus 7 for Singaporean. And the third ABSD is 4 plus 12. How about the fourth ABSD? It could be 5 plus something. We don't know. To make sure that the market is fundamentally strong for the first timer. So government is really making sure that the first timer are well protected. As you can see from here, if I put this in perspective, for this 2015 all the way to 2019 supply chart, when supply increase, government ease cooling measures. When supply decrease, government introduce, introduce new cooling measures. So now, take a look at the policy again from Lawrence Minister. He says this, property price curb achieve stabilization goal. That is always the goal. Take note for all the first timer here and even for multiple property investors like yourself and myself. It's never in the government interest to crash the market. Cooling measures is here to stay. You like it or not. They want to make sure that it balances, it stabilizes the market. That is the main intention of the Singapore government. You see that? As you can see from this, not to bring down prices word by word from Lawrence Minister, okay? But to stabilize and moderate the cycle. So that is the main intent. So now let's take a look here, very interestingly. As you can see from here, now I'm using the past data to do some analysis. So in second half 2020, all the way to 2014, did you realize something? Currently, supply is increasing. So when the supply is increasing, because currently we are here, see my cursor? When the supply is increasing, if history repeats itself, it means that government now are actually maybe looking, monitoring it carefully, okay? Monitoring it carefully to maybe relax policy, relax cooling measures. But earlier, do you remember when government were to relax relax the policy what happened to the price so it's something not an easy task for the government okay the supply will only start to decrease around 2024 but again based on the big data on the analysis these supply are all easily absorbed within a very healthy two to three years range number six coming to the end very soon let's take a look at another insights for all the potential buyers here we call it the dips and the picks analysis using the URA price trend. Okay, I want you to see the next slide, very important for all the investors. What is your insights and what did you observe? I want you to take a look at the blue color and the red color. The red color is the dip. Okay, if you're able to see my, my dip because it's an important slide, you type, you type a word called D so that we are we are connected okay you type a word called d let me see type a word called d okay d okay take a look at my cursor what did you observe did you spotted an important trend this data is very updated it's from 2000 to 2020 okay as at october all right did you realize this deep deep is what we call risk 
Because whenever there's a property investment, are there risks? Acknowledge it. There is risk because there's always somebody that sell in this deep. Can you see this deep? There's somebody who sell in this deep. That's where they incurred financial loss. Yeah? But I want you to observe a very important insight for all of you. So long you have higher holding power. Wow. Okay, there's very savvy investor that answered the insight already. You're right. Okay, one of the savvy investor here, okay, say he observed an uh, insight. And the insight is the next dip, did you realize? Is always higher. The prices is always higher than the previous dip. Did you realize that? Can you see the next dip is always higher than the previous dip? Holding power becomes important. If you were to be here, steady, hold for a long term, even if there's another downtrend, did you realize you still earn profit? Let's take a look at another insight on the pick. The pick. Did you realize the pick? What insight did you observe now? The blue color, the pick. Can somebody, you, this is a very important insight, very important trend. Take a look at this blue color pick. What did you see? Pick two compared to pick one. And pick three compared to pick, pick two. Did you realize something? The pick is always higher or lower. Yes, I saw that, the answer. You can also answer to, the, to all, the, all the attendees if you want to. Because when I'm communicating, yeah, I realize, okay, when you answer, right, for everyone to learn, okay, you can actually uh, go down the scroll down bar. There's this thing called all panelists and attendees. So you can also let all the attendees here to take a look at the insight that you observe. Yes, you're right. The pick is always higher than the previous, previous pick. So this important insight coupled with the earlier analysis, it will help us in making a more prudent property investment. Lastly, project analysis. I'm going to use Clairvon. And today there'll be a sneak review. Okay, sneak, we call it sneak review of this Clairvon. Okay, I'm using this to tie in together so that you got a more complete picture going forward when we want to do property investment, how to go about doing all the analysis to make sure that it is prudent. So as you can see from this Clavon, on the sec seven important analysis, we call it project analysis. Yeah? Okay, Clavon comprises two block, 37 story, along Clementi Avenue 1. So these are all the bedroom types, one plus steady, very limited in supply in the whole stretch. There's only this particular condominium. The neighbor, the Claremont canopy, that isn't a one plus steady. It also comprises a two bedroom, three bedroom, and four bedder. These are the sizes, 678764, all the way to 12812, 1582. Five bedrooms, very limited supply. Remember the insight from the earlier article? Now with this COVID, we work from home there's a higher demand for bigger homes. So we have this small little niche, limited supply as well because the neighbor, which is the Clement Canopy, only have up to four bedrooms. So how to do project analysis? Today I'm going to impart to you, this is how we are going to do the project analysis. So this is a stand important point, okay? To go about deciding whether one project suits our investment. So number one, award-winning developer. Number two, location. Number three, look at the upside potential, whether that is. Number four, how about a 99-year lease within the District 5 versus a freehold in District 5? Master plan, important, very important. Number six, educational hub, rentability, low land cost advantage. And is this the right entry price? And is it the right time to enter? And if it's the right time to enter, when is our exit point? So these are all important questions that my wife and myself will ask ourselves. So very quickly, let me show you the first one. Award-winning developer. So we will do homework to see whether Clavon in this case, okay, is by reputable developer. It is by UOL. And let's take a look at whether they got track record. Why is it so important? Because you know, we wanted to reduce our risk to see whether they can deliver the result that we wanted to whenever we see their brochure. So these are all the projects that the developer has done now. Even Nassim Park Residences in a Porsche District 9, District 10. You see this? Nassim Park Residences. 
So it's by the very same developer that is going to build Clermont. Okay, what is this award? Fiasi, Fiasi Prince Excellence Award. This award is not just a beauty contest. It also represents project as a cut above the rest. Yeah? So as you can see, this is the numerous award that the developer done up. It's something that I will go into it to do homework. Hey, very safe. This developer actually won Fiasi Award. Besides Fiasi Award, this developer also won Asia Award. Let me go this. Hey. Okay. So this will give me confidence developer can deliver. The concept about this Clairvon is the essence of living. We only have currently official, we only want to show you the official, the perspective, the grand drop-off point, all right? And can you imagine this, immensing ourselves into this very experiences within this very development, the very developer that built Nassim Park residences, that's above $3,000 per square foot. We have this very developer with solid track record that's going to build this. So when I see this perspective, I know they will deliver it. And I'll be probably here sitting on this sofa, enjoying the whole tranquil ambience within this Clavon. The architectural breathing will be coming soon. Stay tuned for our next subsequent one. Architectural concept, how they derive the whole concept, all this will be shared to all of you very, very soon by all the ERA agent here that invited you here into this webinar. If you wanted to find out more. And continue with our project analysis to show you how to go about it. Location, location, location. Let's take a look at location analysis. As you can see from Clevon, this is the bubble. This is extracted from a URA master plan. One very important insight is very, it's very important to reduce our risk. This Clavon location is actually at the corner of a fringe area. What do you mean by fringe? City fringe. Any line below this black color line, by definition from the URA, is called city fringe. So this OCR location is very unique. It's very close to city fringe. And that is a very important competitive advantage. Can you imagine entering at an OCR price, but yet enjoying fringe like living. That is amazing, provided we do the homework. Not only that, it's very near to Bukitima. Can you see that? Bukitima and Queenstown. Queenstown is a city fringe location, but you need to pay city fringe price. Here, we pay OCR pricing, yet enjoy city fringe location. It's something that we need to analyze for project analysis. Take a look at this drone view. It's actual site drone view. Huh? on the 36th floor, it's open to the city. Can you see that? It's amazing view. For, for the full 360 degrees drone view, you may link up with the ERA agent who invited you here. Yeah? So this is the actual site, the red color here. Did you see that? This is the actual site. This is another view towards the Nanhua High. Another open panoramic view that's going to wow us. It's also on the 36th floor. As you can see, this is the back side of it. This is Clementi Avenue, Clementi Avenue 1. Still on location, it's walking distance to MRT. Okay, it's about eight minute plus walk to the MRT and minutes drive to AYE. As you can see from this Clevon, it is about, it is about sev 770 meter, 770 meter. Okay, it's this cursor here. Sorry, there's a small little error here. It should be up here. 70, 770 meter to the MRT. So it's one round the stadium and then second round the stadium. The distance towards the city is only 7.5 click. Very near to the city. Convenience to the amenities. Within short walk, you reach all this bus stop. Cold storage, NTUC, Sing Xiong, etc. So these are all important project analysis that my wife and myself will do it before we decide on any property investment. These are the amenities. A picture speaks a thousand words. Okay, besides location, another very important point is upside potential. We want to see whether if we were to buy this, would there be upside potential? So to know whether there's upside potential from project analysis perspective, right? We need to analyze five important things. Number one, 
OCR performance, District 5 performance, Clementi Town performance, neighbor performance, and even down to adjacent land performance. We call it the growth catalyst, which I'll share with you, share with you more shortly. Take a look at the OCR. This OCR is an apple-apple comparison because Clevon is at OCR. Past 15 years, 180%. Meaning if you invest 100K, you earn 180K. Overall, it's 280K. 10 years, 33% return. 5 years, 14% return. Why is it important to look at the past track record? Okay, in layman term, just imagine now if you want to buy a Rolex Daytona watch. You want to buy a Rolex Daytona watch, you may want to ask around, hey, whether this Ro Rolex Daytona watch, right, in the past 5-10 years, right, has it appreciated or depreciated? Yeah? And if you start to analyze, you realize that maybe 10 years ago, Daytona is about 20k. But now you buy the same Daytona Rolex, right? It's worth 25k. It's a 5k increment. So now your decision, whether to buy another Daytona. Eh? You realize that, eh, actually the price appreciated. We use a proxy data to make the decision. And you buy Rolex Daytona. So that is a layman term why we want to analyze history analyze history to let us make a more prudent investment decision. So take a look at D5 now. District 5. District 5, take a look at the blue color. The blue color is where Clavon is. Can you see the 15 year return? 215% actually outperformed the whole market. 10 year return 43% outperformed the whole market 32%. Based on data, which is very updated all the way to all the way to 2020 October. As you can see from here, District 5 is also outperforming all District 24%. The green color one is the whole of Singapore. The blue color one is specific to Clavon. This is the project analysis we'll do in a very systematic way. How about Clementi? Because Clavon is also in Clementi. Let's take a look at the performance as well. Like what we did for the Rolex Daytona Example, Clementi, 15 year, oh, it's outbeats, 222% two, two, two versus 146. 10 year return, 54%, also outperform. And how about the five year? Also outperform, 23% versus 18%. So it's consistent. And another demand, de demand point that may increase the upside potential, we also want to see how the Clementi HDB is performing. As you can see, four room HDB, Clementi, already factures 900K. Some HDB, Clementi, already crossed 1 million. So when the HDB in Clementi is of this value, it makes it very easy for the upgrader to upgrade to Clavon. Because generally, a lot of people want to stay near within their HDB. How about the Clement Canopy? Clement Canopy is the neighbor. Is the neighbor. We also want to, we also want to see how the neighbor performs. So this neighbor, right? Three and a half years already appreciated by 13%. Majority of this owner, first mover advantage, the early birds, they buy 13XX per square foot. So developer always do this thing called phase pricing. The next phase pricing is about 14 to 15XX. There will be some ups and downs, but we have to average it up to see that trend. To see that trend. This is the green zone. And recently, this is the yellow zone. So this is the exit point. Lady, ladies and gentlemen, for those who want to buy then the Clem Clement Canopy, some already start to exit here. All right? They exit here and they earn about 13%. So for those who buy here, right, they are buying a resale unit, but they are the minority. They are the minority uh, that buy at the highest price compared to the majority that buy at the lowest price at 13XX. So this group may face a higher resale risk at later part when they want to sell. Why? Because there's a huge majority that bought at cheaper price. So this is something that project analysis, we want to analyze. So now we go deeper. Let's take a look at Clement Canopy to see what are the facing, whether they got returns or not. As you can see, generally for this plot of land, just besides Clavon, the one that's facing, we call it the two bedroom. In this case, will be this 04, stack 04, two bedroom facing Clementi, this guy earned 77K. 
How about another one that's facing inner facilities? The four bader and the three bader. You see, this is facing inner facilities, stack 01. This is facing inner facilities. The three bader and the four bader, they earn 222K and 321K. We observe one important insight. Bigger unit earn bigger profit quantum. Can you imagine back our do nothing analysis? Can you imagine then we do nothing? But then those who bought the Clement Canopy, if they happen to buy the three beta and the four beta, they are already sitting on this. In fact, not sitting. These are the real owner, by the way. It is all extracted from the URA caveats. These are the real owner. The owner really exited already, already earned three two one k This owner already exited, already earned two 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 k How about the one that's facing AYE? The one that's open view earned one oh six k so these are all the two beta, three beta, four beta on all the different views. See, all the different views. This is the AYE. So on all the different views, if we were to amalgamate the whole data here using the big data, on average, using the average size, the average capital appreciation for the Clement Canopy earn about 171K. 171K. So this is what we mean by doing neighbor analysis as a proxy, like what we did for our Rolex Daytona analysis. So what is a good exit point? Whenever we want to buy certain property, we want to know what are the few important data points to exit. One is this, okay, what is this? This is a potential growth catalyst that will lead you to a potential exit point. If you're someone that are okay and comfortable to just earn 171K approximately, all right? But of course, it's a range depending on the unit and the big room type that you are buying. Okay, this is where Clavon is. This is where Clavon is. This is where the canopy, the Clement canopy is. Remember the earlier analysis that we did for project analysis? We analyzed the whole stretch. If you analyze the whole stretch of this, this whole Clementy Avenue one, right? This is the one and only future government land site. One and only. One and only. When supply is limited, what will happen to the price? What will happen to the bid? What will happen to all the developers coming to bid this land? Because it needs to be market price. Yeah? Because the money will be ultimately go back to consume, to a uh, taxpayer, like Singapore citizens. What will happen to the land cost? The land cost is going to be up or down. What will happen to the land cost? Up or down? Let me see the answer. What is your gut feel? What will happen to this land plot? Would it be up or down? Ah, okay, I see answers. Thank you for participating. There's no right and wrong uh, because we are all the market. Uh, we are sharing this analysis to see how, how you feel, okay? Because everyone is different. Everyone is different. So yes, when this is up, ladies and gentlemen, you're right already. When this is up, the remember land cost up, construction cost up, means what? Future for this plot of land per square foot will be pulled up, will be higher. That is where you exit. Clavon, that is where you exit. Yeah, you exit, you earn your tidy profit. This is one exit point. There's another few more exit points I'm going to share with you shortly. But before that, ta -da! okay, I want to share with you, I did this analysis, project analysis to show you all what we mean by project analysis using observing statistics like what Warren Buffett says. Okay, how many of you are feel that, uh, okay, based on the URA data, a district five freehold and least hold, which one performed better? Okay, if you say 99 performed better, you press 99. If you feel that free hold performed better, you put free hold. Okay, don't look at your neighbors. Huh? Anyway, you also not look at your neighbors. Okay, just type something that you feel, no right or wrong. Okay, that is what we call market. Okay, if you could, huh, maybe can you type to all attendees also? Because huh, it will be very interesting for all the attendees to see your answer. Okay, it's always very interesting. Maybe some of you are too shy to show all the attendees, huh? okay? We have a lot of uh, consumers here. Huh? Okay, there are some say freehold, there are also some say 99 year lease. So the good thing about data is no emotion buying. So take a look at the data now. Can you see this data? It's very busy slides, but very easy. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, just follow my cursor. Huh? Blue color, Blue color is 99 year lease. It is updated uh, as at from last 15 years uh, as updated as October. Uh, 
All right. So take a look at my 99 year lease. Uh. 99 year lease, uh, the performance is 241% for 15 years. It outperformed freehold 116%. See that? 15 year holding period outperformed. 99 year lease outperformed. Apple, Apple comparison, District 5 versus District 5. Yeah, Apple, Apple comparison. How about 10 year? Why we always like to use 5 year, 10 years, 15 years? So as to give you a sense of what we mean by, okay, mid-term investment. Short-term investment about 3 to 5 years. This kind of investment period, okay? How about 10 year? 10 year, uh, ladies and gentlemen, District 5, uh, leasehold uh, perform better, you know, than freehold. 51% versus 14.3%. These are all not from Rhino, you know. It's all directly from URA. If we make it a point to do our homework, this is one to share with you why our, our, our investment risk will be low when we do all this homework. How about another one? Five-year return. You see the five-year return? 30% versus 4.4%. You may ask, okay, for those who keen freehold, now you may be very puzzling, right? Hey, how come a 99-year lease, huh? how come 99-year lease huh, perform better than, than freehold? Anyone want to know? If you want to know, you say, I want to know. I want to know. It's all District 5, big data. Okay, it's all District 5. That means we amalgamate, okay, from the URA. Okay, you want to know, right? Very good. I share with you the logic. Huh? You want to know, right? Very good. I want to ask you this. Generally speaking, right, before I answer you this important question, generally speaking, huh, most of you always feel freehold is better, right? Intuitively, right? Given a choice, you want freehold, right? Yes. Yes or no? Can all of you answer? Very important. Try to answer to all attendees. So that I want to share with you this very important insight. Okay. My question is, uh, generally everyone, okay, given a choice, you will feel that freehold is better than, freehold is better than leasehold. Is it correct generally? Yes, right? I saw a lot of yes, right? But now the question is, how come the data show that leasehold actually perform better than Freehold. What does that mean? Uh? It means, uh, see my cursor here, uh, buyer who bought here, right? Okay, if they invest 100K, uh, they earn 241K. Uh. See that? Buyer who invest here in 2011, uh, okay? See my cursor? If they invest 100K, uh, they earn 51K. See that? Versus a freehold, uh, they only... Okay, you earn a 30K, uh, whereas uh, you invest in a freehold, you only earn 4K. Uh, okay, 4K. Uh. Why? Uh? Why is that so? Because of you. Uh? You know why is it because of you? Same thing. Because the seller of freehold, listen very carefully. Uh, the seller of freehold know that a lot of people like you will want to buy freehold. You know what? they increase the premium substantially. That means they sell very expensively. They increase the premium substantially. When they increase the premium substantially, means what? Your upside potential as a buyer become lower. From the context of this D5 analysis, District 5 analysis. See that? So, if you're having a very healthy horizon as a first mover, to go into new project, 99 year lease, with a holding period of three years, five years, seven years, 10 years, based on data analysis, we are on safe bet. Yeah? Because the 99 year lease, District 5 are performing better than the freehold. If you hold for this period, you earn more money compared to freehold. Based on no emotional selling, but based on pure hard facts from the URA data. Okay, next. Still on project analysis, uh, on Clavon, uh, upside potential, okay, which is the master plan, is very important. Do you know how many of you agree with me that, okay, master plan is important? Master, but after 20 years, okay, later then I address some question, all right? So I, so I quickly complete it first, all right? Quickly complete it first. Okay, how many of you agree that when your neighbor uh, built a shopping center up, your price your own house price will increase. If you say will increase, can you type will increase? Okay, maybe type to all the panelists and also all the attendees. Uh, increase, very good. You're right. So that's the reason, very simple, mentor, ma. we must know our neighbor's uh, master plan. It's just as simple. Neighbor master plan is important. So, Clavon are there 
Master plan? Yes, it's right in the middle, which is very important. Show you this, huh? As you can see from this URA master plan, where's the location of this Clavon? Clavon is here. It's right at the middle of number one, the West Transformational Plan. One North, can you see one North Transformational Plan? And the third one is the Greater Southern Waterfront Master Plan. It is right at the middle. It's at the corner of this fringe. See that? When our neighbor do well, we do well because there's this spillover effect. Yeah? Spillover effect. Can see all this? Jurong Innovation District, Jurong Lake, uh, Lake District, Tuas Mega Ports. All this will generate investment, you know, a lot of money, billions and billions of dollars will go in. And there'll be a lot of employees. And when employees go in, what happened? The whole value will go up. MRT wheel will go up. The land costs go up. All this will have a spillover effect on the nearby Clavon, which in this case, right at the middle. All right? It's very important. That is your exit point also, ladies and gentlemen. So the second exit point will be as and when this transformation about to take place, when certain amenities is up, you can exit. All right? That is the exit point. So as you can see from here on this panoramic view, this is in the middle. Can you see? In the middle, Clavon. On the left and right, can you see left and right? One north and greater southern waterfront. And the other one is the Jurong Lake side, which is the west transformation. It's right at the middle. So as you can see from here, these are the Clementi plan. You can extract all this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, no hard, uh, no emotion selling. You go into the master plan zoning. This is where, when I make my first move uh, for my own property investment, I go to the master plan. Yeah, this is what Clementi is. It's going to have more amenities, more recreational spaces, more healthcare facilities, landscape, waterway, etc., etc., etc. As you can see, these are all the plannings. Can you see the West transformation? Mainly, there are three key things Jurong Lake District, Jurong Innovation District, and Mega Port. I want to highlight one important thing. This is deferred, not cancelled. It is deferred, not cancelled. Okay, as you can see from this article from the authority website from the LTA, from the LTA, what does it say? It agrees to defer the high speed rail. Can you imagine? Imagine when all these are completed, it's going to spur, okay, demand in the West area. And there will be this spillover effect. And remember, this Clavon is in which area? It's in West area. Talking about exit point again, remember the exit point beside the plot that's beside Clavon? The other exit point will be this, when the Jurong region line are fully completed in 2026, 2027, and 2028. So for those who wanted to hold for a longer term, say eight years horizon, that will be your second point exit if you want to. See that? Because the spillover effect, you'll feel it when all these are being completed. See all this? Six railway, etc. all this are all going to be completed. So all this, you can find it from the master plan. Jurong region line, 24 click. How about the Jurong Lake District? Hub for the future economy, new paradigm, etc. A picture speaks a thousand words. When all these amenities, you saw these amenities and all these landscaping are completed, that is where there will be spillover effect. See that? All the environment, spillover effect. Later, I'm going to show you a case in point example on what we mean by spillover effect. Case in point example. So as you can see from here, only just a few days a day, few days ago article, Jurong Innovation District has 420 million. Bear us during this COVID-19 situation. Eh, there's still 420 million come into Singapore, you know, new investment. And to date, eh, it's already 2 billion invested in just this JID already. So that will be another exit point for Clavon. See this mega twas? It's in full steam. Con full steam, as you can see from here. Full steam in this 2017 articles is continued to under transformation. It's already halfway marked already. This will be the future pop that's going to house all the mega, we call it high tech, high technology workers, knowledge based workers. And all these need what? When they come over to Singapore, they need a shelter. So slowly and surely, you start to see the demand for housing will be creeping up because we need all this to have a house to stay, right? So as you can see from here, the Tuas mega pots. They may not be staying in Tuas. This is what we mean. They may want to stay in Clementi. They may want to stay in Jurong. They may want to stay basically West area because they, this is the spillover effect. 
for those who work in the Jurong Innovation District, they may not want to stay near, so near their house. They may want to stay slightly, slightly away, but not too, not too, not too far. Clementi. So this is what we mean by spillover effect. One North, the same thing. These are the, it's going to be a R&D high technology cluster. Okay, high technology cluster. As you can see from here, these are the nutshell 400 leading com companies, institution, knowledge-based worker of 50, knowledge, 50,000. Can you imagine a foreigner that come to Singapore, they need a shelter, all right? This will spur, this will spur the what? The demand. Same thing, the spillover effect. Not everyone will stay in one North area. There will be some spillover effect for what reason? Children, maybe their children are studying near good school in Clementi. They wanted to be near school. So this is what we mean by spillover effect that we shouldn't underestimate. See, these are all the leading companies. These are all the A to Z. Okay, all the A to Z entry that will spur the whole area. In effect, helping Clavon. So these are all the all in the master plan. Okay, you can see all this in the master plan. From this PM, as you can see from PM Lee, the nas National Day, this will be the Greater Southern Waterfront. Okay, as you can see from this five to 10 years, that will be another exit point. So there's a few exit points. Okay, few exit points for Clavon, depending on your time horizon. But key, remember the insight, the insight we have from the deep and the peak, you must have a whole, you must have a holding power. Yeah. And as you can see from this picture, speaks a thousand words, a new skyline. This could be another exit point. You see that? Greater Southern Waterfront six times moved to twice by 2027. If you wanted a longer horizon timing. So when all these are being completed, you will have that spillover effect. See that? It's all in the master plan. As you can see from here, all in the master plan. And currently, Clavon is right smack at it. Okay, in addition to that, we also want to do a project analysis on education. Because as you're aware, like myself, I got three kids. My, my wife and myself are Yasu parents also. Yeah, Yasu parents. We want to make sure, okay, it's near school. As you can see from here, let's take a look at master plan again. When we do a location analysis for this project, you realize this is Clavon. Can you see my Clavon? Okay, Clavon here. Clavon. The E, what is the legend for this E? It's all education. Can you imagine? This Clavon location is right smack at the heart of this whole education hub. NUS, Yields, Nanhua, International Community School, Japanese School. Can you imagine for those investors? Think about it this way. You are a foreign invest. You are a foreign student. Now you go to KL, you go to uh, Australia, you go to UK. You are you will be finding a what? An accommodation. One foreign student, one accommodation. Can you imagine? The rentability will be super high. Okay, rentability will be super high. So when the rentability is very high, it reduces our risk. Why? Because it spur up the prices in the longer term. Yeah, very important. So as you can see from here, it's educational hub. So let me go further, educational hub. So these are the school. INSEAD, Singapore Polytechnic, Nanhua, ACS, ACS, United World College of Southeast Asia, and more and more, as you can see from all this. Clementi Town, these are all the schools right smack at Clavon. Clementi Town, renowned educational institution. So it will spur demand in rental and, in, and indirectly it will spur the prices when there's a high rental demand. Rentability, let's take a look at our neighbor. But before that, are you aware I do a project analysis and suddenly realize that, wait, it actually has this international business park since 1992. And it housed a lot of knowledge-based workers. So this in turn is also rental demand. In addition to all the foreign potential students that will also create the rental demand. Let's take a look at the, Cle the Clement Canopy, which is just decided. Very strong rental based on the recent URA transaction. For this two bedroom, the two bedroom is 2008 all the way to 3004. Very dated, August, August, September transactions. How about the three bedrooms, 4,000 to 5,000? October transaction to August transaction from the URA caveats. So the rentability is very high. And how about entry point? 
Remember the earlier analysis on the supply on the land? When the land cost is low, our risk is low, provided we are first timer. And provided we not first, what I mean is provided we are first mover. Okay, first mover. So as you can see from here, from the URA, this land bid, the, the size of Clairvaughn is 178065, 788 per square foot per plot ratio. Land cost, take a look at this land cost of Clairvaughn, 788. So in the whole of West area and OCR area in the recent land bid, it is the lowest. And potentially, from what we calculate after factoring in the construction cost, the other cost, the finance cost, the same profit margin generally uh, being uh, most of the developer wants, potentially for first mover, early bird, they may potentially got lucky to have 1491 per square foot. Take note, this is only our estimate. So this is usually what we'll do for our own project analysis. In fact, in fact, this is a very important advantage, okay, low land cost. So let me show you more. So this is something that's very important for us to decide the entry price. In fact, when do this whole entry price, as you can see from this, Clever is at the center. The green color is the West and the blue color is the OCR, for example, in District 19. 149x first mover. Potentially, you can see from here. Can you achieve price is 1953? Park Clementis 1750. Affinity is Rangoon 1794. Florence 1729. Sengkang 1860. And interestingly, if you even want to do further analysis, you realize that, hey, you realize the District 19 here, right? They are actually further away from the city fringe but they are already fetching at 1718 per square foot already. We are sitting on an advantage of close to about $300 per square foot. Any price below 17 will be a good buy for depending on the unit, small unit or big units, all right? But as you can see from here, right? We are having the flexibility of low land cost. Usually when we have this low land cost from me, from this project analysis angle, it become a low risk prudent potential buy. As you can see from this bar chart here, this whole bar chart here, where I derive all the data. Can you see all the data? 1953, 1860, 1750, 1794, 1729 is all extracted from the URA data and it's very updated as at fourth quarter 2020. So coming back, going into the caveats, now we go by the bean cow. Okay, we count the beans. Okay, this is the achieved price. Can you see it's only September, September 2020. As you can see the yellow, it ranges from 1,008 all the way to 1,009. See that? If you're able to achieve the first mover advantage price. How about another one, Singkan? From 1,7 all the way to 1,860. Can you see that? And currently, if you're able to achieve this as the first mover advantage price. So for this one, remember the Clement Canopy we mentioned? First mover entering at 13XX. You want to be the first mover, okay? Entering at the first mover pricing. Depending, of course, the, the, the level you're choosing, the facing you're choosing, the size you're choosing. But the good thing is currently it's on our advantage based on this price analysis. As you can see from here, it's 17 all the way to 1750. And potentially for Clevon, 149x per square foot. How about Affinity? 1794 all the way from 16 to 1794, 1729 per square foot from the recent URA transaction, which is August 2020. So, an example of a project analysis on deciding the entry price for Clairvon. So, as you can see from here, it is a very attractive right price entry if and only if we enter as the first mover. So, this is the per square foot. As you can see from here, you can approach the ERA agent that invited you here. Okay, they'll run you through the potential pricing. But take note, currently, developer has yet released the official price to us. 1,005 all the way to 1,825. Take a look at the region here, the legend here. This is the must grab, super grab, good grab, fair grab based on the analysis, okay, on the project analysis and the price analysis that we have from the big data. Okay, question. Now we want to ask ourselves this very important question. Okay, it's the last part already. Okay, I want you to think back. 
during the SARS period, during the layman brothers period, okay, SARS and layman's brother period, do you think during that situation, a lot of people would buy property? Or even think about yourself at that point in time. Do you think it's wise to buy when they're so, every, every day I open the news, right? Every day I open the news during the SARS period, okay? One person die, second person die, all the bad news, retrenchment, uncertain, uncertainty in the world, etc., etc. Do you think it's wise to buy at that point in time? Or should we do nothing, wait and see? Or should we wait for a better time to buy? Which one is your answer? A, A, B, or C? That means buy in SARS period, okay? Buy during good time or do nothing, generally based on your gut feel. Because all this answer is something that I ask myself and my wife also, to better understand ourselves. They call it 自己自比, by zan, by sen, so that we know a little bit more about ourselves, we will be able to know our investment strategy. So let me take a look at the, the answer. Okay, those who have funds should buy in adversity. Okay, great. Buy during COVID. Oh, all right. Okay, we have many answers here. All right, many answers here. So let me share with you this question again, which I asked myself. During the SARS and Lehman Brothers crisis, I want you all to think for a moment, during that period, think real. Okay, during that period, right, where almost every day are negative news and the show flat is totally empty. So when the show flat is totally empty, right, we want to ask ourselves, during that kind of emotion, right, because every day is bad news, should we buy or not? Should we buy when the show flat is totally empty during that SARS period, the Lehman Brothers period, where all the negative news and where the sales are very slow, should we buy during that period? No right and wrong answer, no right and wrong. It's all about a question that you need to ask ourselves. A question that has helped me tremendously by asking myself, no, right? Okay, you see, there are some answers which say no, some say yes, very good. This is called the market. See that? Very good. Some say no, I shouldn't buy when the show flat is empty, when there's a layman brothers. Yeah? Okay, I see the answer, no. Some say yes. You see, that is the very interesting part. So remember Warren Buffett wisdom? Warren Buffett says, go for the observing statistic. So let's take a look at the observing statistic right now. I don't have the answer. I show you the statistic, yeah? Do you want to buy when the show flat is like that? Of course, now COVID-19, we can't like that. But generally, do you want to buy when everything is rosy, when everything is certain, when everything is good news, and when every buyer flock into the show flat to buy the property? Do you, are you waiting for this time to go and buy? You have to ask yourself, are you? Are you wanting this time? If yes, I want to ask you another question. If you are the seller, if you are the seller, and you know now the news is very good, vaccine is formed, every, every, every day is good news, the economy is doing well, everything is good news. If you are the seller, what will you do with the price? Would you increase the price to sell expensively? Would you as a seller? And if you would, what would happen to the buyer in this picture here? They are buying because they feel that the world is very certain. What will happen to the buyer? What kind of price that the buyer will be buying? It's something that you have to ask yourself. Are you waiting for this moment to buy at that kind of pricing? Or every day the news is bad. Layman Brothers, crisis. No one is visiting the show flat. Only one or two. Sales are very slow. Very slow. I want you to imagine do you buy as a buyer in this time? Do you? Do you? Do you? Think about it. A very important question. I want you to think in terms of now if you are the seller, you are the developer. Every day I open the news. COVID-19. COVID-19. The world are getting more uncertain. The flight don't know whether it can fly or not. People are dying from all over the world and the numbers are increasing. When I'm the developer, I want you to imagine you are now the developer reading this kind of negative news every day. And when you go to the show flat, you see that your show flat is empty. Ah, 
very, very pathetic, empty. I want to ask you, you now, you are the CEO, you are the developer. No double standard. Uh, we are very simple but powerful concept. I want to ask you, you as a developer, what will you do with the price that you are going to sell? Are you going to sell it reasonably? Are you as a developer? And if you are going to sell it reasonably as a developer, because every day you are reading negative news, what? Who benefit? Who benefit? Buyer? Does the buyer benefit? Why will you SARS? Because currently got COVID-19 as a proxy. For those who buy during the SARS period, okay, you buy at the worst time and you sell at the worst time. For those buyer, they earn 212%. Meaning if they invest 100K, they earn 212K. For those who buy during the worst time and sell at the worst time of subprime crisis, they earn 71%. For every 100K, they earn 71K. That is based on observing statistics. But how many of us will enter? You will enter man, during the SARS period and the Lehman Brothers period. Will you enter when the show flat is empty? But based on the observing statistics, they are earning this kind of return. They are earning this kind of return. 71% to 212%. Now, the second, for those who buy and hold all the way until now, they earn 287% return. For every 100K, they earn 287K. And for those who buy during Layman Brother, the rock bottom time, you have to understand when we, now we got statistics, we are able to see where is the deep, right? But you have to understand eh, when you are during that time, you don't know when is the deep, you know. You never know. Because when, like now, we never know when is the deep, 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 deep of COVID-19. We never know. But now, given hindsight, we do know that when we are at the worst time, there are still somebody who enter the market, you know. And the somebody who enter the market, if they hold until now, this guy actually earned 127%. See that? 127%. Buy at the worst time of Lehman brother. Okay, and at the same time, hold until now. Every 100K, he earned 127K. See that? 287, 127%. So what is that moral of the story? The moral of the story, based on the observing statistic, do we want to buy when the show flat is empty? And when the show flat is empty, when there's negative news to all the developers, generally, you as the developers, what will you do with the pricing? you will be more reasonable with the pricing. And when you are more reasonable with your pricing, who benefit? Buyer. You see the, 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 the intuition, the, the count, the, the, by analyzing this part? So now, question. Now given this insight, do we want the COVID-19 vaccine to be found earlier or later? From the property investment angle, when, let's say, for example, tomorrow announced, we already found, what will happen to the price? Because it's good news, right? Do we, want to, do we want to invest before this good news release, which is going to be released soon? Looking at all the different countries rushing, you see China rushing, Russia, and all the different countries are doing their best to find the vaccine. Do we want to enter before all this become certain and when all this becomes certain what will happen to the price if you are the seller wisdom from warren buffett be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful so if the observing statistics shows when the show flag is empty the seller will be reasonable what will you do as a buyer when would you want to buy now given this new information given this new insight as you can see from all the wealthy Singaporeans, wealthy Chinese buyer, in the past few months, they have been snapping up properties. The rich get richer. Are they seeing something that we didn't see? They buy when there is a lot of uncertainty, not when there's a lot of certainty. They buy when the show flat is empty, totally empty. Why? Because they know at this point in time, seller will be more reasonable. And last but not least, I want to show you this last part, retirement plan. Okay, imagine us as this couple. You saw this car? You want to retire? Let's say morning, $10, breakfast, 
lunch ten dollars, dinner ten dollars, thirty dollars per day. And for those smoker, you add another ten dollars, forty dollars per day. Times thirty days, we need one thousand two hundred to retire. Very simple meal per day. If a couple, I need two thousand four. Sixty five, I retire at the age of eighty five. So in twenty years, I need at least five seven six k. Five seven six k. This is the fund. Are you prepared for this fund already? Five hundred and seventy six k is a lot of money. This is at least a simple meal each day. Looking at first timer, an existing wife and husband, this could be a simple retirement plan. Take a look at the green color zone here. Option number one. Buy condo at one point five six million. Hold for thirty years. Pay off the loan because you pay thirty year loan. You pay off the loan. You sell at the same price. Sell at the same price, and then you buy a HDB, four o six k with lease remaining forty years. You would have a retirement fund of one point one five four million. Very simple plan with no capital appreciation. I will make it very simple. Option number one will have this amount. 1.154 million. Option number two, for those who are able to afford second condo, you stay on your existing house. Same thing, you hold the second condo for 30 years. You pay your monthly instalment in a disciplined way. You pay off your loan. You sell at the same price. I don't even say capital appreciation. You sell at the same price at 1.56 million after 30 years. So what happened is because you got two property, right? Because you take a seventy-five percent financing at one point one percent, total interest is two o four k. Rental income, three thousand five times twelve times thirty one point two six million. You use this minus the interest. You continue to stay at your existing home. Your retirement fund will be two point six million. That's why the rich get richer. Option two, option three: do nothing and stay at existing HDB. You hold for thirty years. You pay fully. Continue to stay at this HDB. So what happened is the retirement fund in this case will all be locked into the HDB option number three. How about option number four? You buy a HDB at four o six k. That means four o six. You buy HDB. You hold for thirty years. You fully pay the loan. You sell because HDB got appreciation also, ma. You sell at seven eight six k. And then you use seven eight six k already. You sell already, right? You buy back another o one. Lease remaining forty years because as the lease remaining oh, remaining is lesser, right? You can get a comfortable price at same four o six k. Your retirement fund three eight zero k. So all this four o six k and one point five six million, where the assumption come from? Come from this big data from URA caveats. In the past twenty years, you see the green color. Can you see that one point five six million? Currently, averagely. At this point in time, a condominium average lease one point five six. For HDB, currently averagely, the HDB is four o six. So earlier retirement plan, simple plan is backed by this simple long trend analysis data. So for those who twenty years back buy a condo, ah, he's actually sitting a profit of nine one seven k. Whereas for those who buy the HDB, they are also sitting a profit of one nine one k. See that. Something you have to ask yourself: Which one you prefer, the green, the purple, the blue, or the orange? Because that would have a huge wealth implication, wealth creation implication going forward in the next five, tens, and twenty years. We can choose to do nothing. My wife and myself, we always ask ourselves this. But after doing the do nothing analysis, we tell ourselves we can also do something, like this, ladies. Okay. Starting to invest for our retirement, and don't need to be complicated. It can be simple plan.